Rawls has had a lot to say now about why he thinks that justice intrinsically involves fairness and why, even if it doesn't seem like it initially, we have good self-interested reasons to accept this claim, both naturally and if we apply sort of the full strength of our rationality. We really ought to accept what he calls the duties of fair play. Now, he thinks that this is a crucial difference from utilitarianism, and it's part of what shows why we should accept something like his two principles rather than a strong version of utilitarianism like something that we discussed last week. And here's why. He thinks that utilitarianism gets some things wrong, and that, in fact, his principles are really different than utilitarianism, even though they might look really similar. Now, if you remember, utilitarianism is all about happiness or utility. And utilitarianism says that the right thing to do is just to maximize happiness, period, full stop. There's no requirement of fairness. So this means that, for example, if it made enough happiness in the world, right, liberty could be incredibly unequal. And the inequality isn't necessarily for anyone's good, right? It could be for an unequal amount of good if it were good enough for any one person, right? All we care about is how much happiness there is in the world as a whole. So it could be, right, that one person is at perfectly, impossibly happy, right? Has a million happy points, and everyone else only has two, right? As long as that's the happiest possible world we could create. So Rawls is going to say, look, this is, this is not okay, right? Utilitarianism gets it wrong because fairness is really important. And so he wants to use an example. He's going to say, look, um, why is it that slavery is wrong? And he's going to say that, that both I and people, someone like Mill, who, who's the sort of archetypal, archetypical utilitarian, will of course say that slavery is wrong, right? We're, this, this is not even under dispute. But they're going to give different reasons. So first he wants to give the utilitarian case. And in this case, right, we're, we're doing it like math. So it ends up that the, the bad of slavery is greater than the good, right? The cost is greater than the benefit. There's more unhappiness, more disutility than utility in slavery. That's why it's wrong, right? It doesn't make the world a happier place. But, right, we can conceive of a way that it might. And this sounds crazy to Rawls, right? He's going to say, this is insane. Why, why are we doing this sort of thing like math? Why are we even claiming that there's any good side of slavery, right? Why, why would we even think about the sort of happiness that it creates? Um, this is insane and deeply unethical, deeply wrong. He's going to say, look, the happiness of anyone who benefits from slavery, of, of slave owners and anybody else, is meaningless, right? Slavery is just wrong because it's unfair, right? It's restricting liberty, it's, it's uh, inequality that's not for the greater good. It's just wrong, period. The happiness that's, that it creates doesn't matter because it's just wrong. Rawls will say, though, look, we might be able to alter utilitarianism if you wanted to, right? And this isn't sort of his final end point of, the, of his theory, right? He doesn't think we should be utilitarians. But he's going to say, look, if you really want to be a utilitarian, um, here's how you really should do it, right? So you don't end up saying crazy things like slavery is only wrong because it makes people sadder. Um, and, right, of course, this is kind of a caricature, but here's what he says we need to do with utilitarianism. We might be able to fix utilitarianism using his principles. So we could say, look, policies or actions are still right and wrong, as they tend to create more happiness or unhappiness. But we only count certain kinds of happiness, right? So only happiness that, that's created as a result of policies that don't violate Rawls's two principles get to count. And if something violates the principles, then it doesn't get to count, right? So the happiness of slave owners, for example, doesn't count. The happiness of someone cheating at Monopoly doesn't count, right? This is an unfair inequality. So there could be what we might call a Rawlsian utilitarian society. But he's going to say, look, this is this still needs to be something that follows the principles first and is utilitarian and second. Otherwise, it would still be unfair, it would still be unjust. This is where we're going to end for the term. Uh, this is a, just a little taste of political philosophy. So you've done this term, uh, some ancient philosophy, some philosophy of religion, of religion some epistemology, some metaphysics. Um, you've done a whole lot of ethics, you've done some political philosophy, uh, you've done a whole lot. And so I think... I, I think that you guys have learned a lot. Um, your papers have tended to be quite good, and your discussion has been exemplary, so I hope that you've learned a lot, and I look forward both to seeing uh, what you'll have to say on the discussion boards this week and in your final papers about philosophy in general. Uh, as always, please do email me with thoughts, comments, questions, and the like, and I will see you this week on the discussion boards. So have a fantastic last week of classes.